So let's talk about everything you need to know about To Kill a Mockingbird Chapter 3. So this chapter starts out with Scout catching up with Walter Cunningham outside of school, starting to beat the stuffing out of him once they're uh, outside of the classroom. So Scout's kind of immature, so she blames Walter for the trouble she was getting in with the teacher because he didn't have lunch, and she had to explain it to the teacher. So Jem steps in and stops the fight and confirms that Walter's father was the man from the beginning of the book that Atticus helped with his entailment on the property. So Jem promises to Walter that Scout won't fight him anymore, and then she invites him home to dinner, which we'd call lunch, but it says dinner in the book, so don't be confused. On the walk home, they talk about Boo Radley. Walter claims he almost died the first year he came to school from eating the pecans that fell off the Radley tree. So you can see everyone in town and outside of town knows about the Radleys. Jem boasts that he touched the Radley house once, but Scout teases him that even though he did that, he still runs past the house every time he goes by it. So Atticus is home for lunch as well because he works in town right down the street. So when they all sit down, Atticus starts talking to Walter like he's an adult about farming. And that whole conversation is over Jem and Scout's head. We find out that Walter can't get out of first grade since he has to stay home every single spring to help with the farm work. So the whole dinner slash lunch is fine until Walter asks for syrup with his meal and starts to pour it over everything on his plate. Probably because he's not used to that kind of luxury and never has it, so he wants it. Scout calls him out on it because she thinks he's ruining his food with the syrup and he's totally embarrassed and kind of puts his head down. Calpurnia hears this, calls Scout into the kitchen and totally chews her out for treating companies so poorly. So this is when we can start talking about themes of the book. So remember, a theme is the main idea or a lesson in a story. And we see the theme of tolerance and compassion emerge right here at this point. There's a great quote from Calpurnia telling Scout that she's disgracing the family name for treating people as lesser than she is, even if, for instance, the Cunninghams aren't as established or important in the community as the Finches. She's still putting on airs or putting herself as better than them. So throughout these summaries, I'm going to point out key quotes like that that tie into the novel's theme. So just a heads up. Calpurnia sends Scout in to get her plate with a smack on her butt. So we know that Calpurnia is the disciplinarian too. Scout stays behind at home when Jem and Walter leave for school because she wants to tattle on Calpurnia to Atticus and try to get her fired for this little incident. But Atticus sets her straight pretty quickly because Calpurnia is key to the household running. Remember, the mother is dead and Calpurnia is, is everything in the household. So back at school, Scout is still brooding on how much she hates Calpurnia at this point and blames her for teaching her to write until all of a sudden Miss Caroline screams and freaks out from the front of the classroom. So the kids first think that she sees a mouse, but she's actually saw this bug in a kid's hair. It's like a tick or something, but they call it a cootie. The kid reaches into his hair and just crushes the bug like it's no big deal. We found out his name is Burris Ewell, and Miss Caroline tries to send him home to wash his hair with a recipe uh, in order to kill this infestation. The kid is a mess, all right? He's super filthy, except there's a clean spot on his face where he washed it or tried to wash it. Burris replies he was about to leave anyway since he's put in his time for the year. Miss Caroline doesn't understand what he's talking about. So a student gets up and explains all about the Ewells to us, that it's a large family, they have no mother, and they all come to school the first day only since the truant lady totally harasses them, and then they never come back. So when Miss Caroline tries to tell him to sit down, there's this nasty altercation when Burris says, try and make me. Uh, the kid is pretty tough. A kid named Little Chuck steps in uh, and says, Miss Caroline, just let him go home. Little Chuck then threatens Burris to get him to back down. He's kind of aggressive. Burris ends up calling her a slut of a school teacher, you heard me, and then leaves. So Miss Caroline breaks down crying and the class tries to comfort her. So Scout's mood is really dark and she sulks even after she gets home. She and Jem go to meet Atticus on his walk home from town and she doesn't really have much to say about the school day. At home, Calpurnia is really kind to her, even giving her a special treat that she doesn't usually get and giving her a kiss. Obviously, Calpurnia senses the day wasn't that great for Scout, but Scout mistakenly interprets uh, her kindness as feeling bad or regretting for treating how Scout so harshly at lunch. So there's quite a few of these in immature interpretations in the first part of the book 
to pay attention to, especially if you have to write about Scout's maturation throughout the novel. You know, we see Scout has very narcissistic interpretations of some events, uh, and then there's other events she totally misses out on the point altogether. So this chapter ends with a discussion Scout has with Atticus that evening out on the front porch. She's trying to convince Atticus to let her drop out of school and tells him of the run-in she had with Miss Caroline that day. So Atticus's response is the second quote in the chapter from Compassion and Tolerance. It's also one of the key lessons in the book that keeps resurfacing and becomes an indicator of Scout's maturity. He says, If you can learn a simple trick, you'll get along a lot better with all kinds of folks. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. So in other words, you know, you have to put yourself in someone's point of view to help understand where he or she is coming from and why someone is acting in a certain way. Scout tries to bring up how the Ewells don't go to school to help her case, so why should she have to go? But Atticus points out that they are the exception to the rule, that the law bends in some special cases. And we get some more background on the Ewells at this point. The Ewells do become important to the plot later in the book, so it got to pay attention to them. Some of the things we learn is that they live by the dump really poorly, and they're halfway between the town and the African-American settlement. The town just kind of ignores some of the ways that they break the law, such as not going to school and they can hunt out of season. The father is an alcoholic, and he spends a lot of his welfare check on whiskey. So it's not a good situation at all, and the, the town just kind of turns the, the other way. Scout's really worried, though, that she won't be, able to allow, uh, won't be able to keep reading with Atticus, so he makes a deal with her that if they just keep that quiet, they're going to get to continue reading together. So the mood for the rest of the evening is, is lighter. So you can see that some important elements of the book get started in Chapter 3, and we learn some key information about characters and some key quotes that will be developed and come into play later in the novel. So again, if you have any questions, just put them in the comment, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can and help you out. All right, take care.